Thanks, Alessio. As Mark Shuttleworth mentioned earlier today, Ubuntu usage is massive across the cloud native ecosystem. Is there some simple way to manage the administration of that usage across versions and environments? Rajan Patel is here to show you just how to handle that with Landscape. Let's do this. Thank you, David. I'm Rajan Patel, the product manager for Landscape, and I'm excited to talk about Juju and managing Ubuntu at enterprise scale. We're already leveraging Juju to deploy applications to Kubernetes, but Juju has remarkable versatility. All your applications need multiple components, and you want to deploy, configure, maintain, and scale these components in a way that is uniform and consistent. That's why you use Juju. Juju can deploy to public cloud, private clouds, multi-clouds, bare metal, and containers. And this versatility means that you'll be managing an Ubuntu estate with charms deployed to all of those environments. Landscape is Canonical's systems management application. You get insight into any running physical or virtual machine or container and have the ability to apply configurations and perform automations at scale. Landscape reduces risk from human error when managing systems, and it exposes tooling for security and compliance. It provides inventory controls for hardware and software and integrates with third-party software like Active Directory, security agents, and even chat and ticketing systems through an API. And guess what? You can deploy Landscape with Juju. While the quick start installation is tempting and the manual install may be the familiar path, when you see how easy Juju makes installing, configuring, and maintaining Landscape, you will never want to set it up any other way. You can reap the benefits of straightforward scalability and high availability when deploying via Juju. The Landscape Edge charms contain the current Landscape beta code base, and this version of Landscape marks a significant departure from the legacy code base. The Landscape charms are authored in Juju's new reactive framework. And as for Landscape itself, in the beta, Landscape has shed some of its dependencies, and it installs seamlessly into Focal and Jammy Ubuntu releases. Ubuntu versions 20.04 and 22.04, respectively. Landscape Beta will not install on Bionic, which is the code name for Ubuntu 18.04. Today, we will install Landscape Beta into LexD containers on a single machine with a valid SSL certificate. When installing a Landscape Charm Bundle, these applications are deployed as a collection, and you get out-of-the-box optimizations for performance and security. The Charm Bundle maps the relationships between each application, so you don't have to manually connect anything. Landscape's Charm Bundles come in three flavors. Landscape Dense Maz will deploy Landscape on just one machine using LexD containers for all services. Landscape Dense is quite similar to the Landscape Dense Maz deployment, but it installs the Haproxy service directly on the machine without a container. All the other services use LexD containers. And this is useful for cases where the LexD containers don't get externally routable IP addresses. Now, it's possible to deploy landscape scalable in a similar manner with uh, port forwarding to expose a proxy. Uh, landscape scalable gives each service its own machine. You will need five machines in total, four for landscape and one for the Juju controller node. Landscape scalable makes the fewest assumptions about your environment and its constraints. It is the likeliest starting point for most users. I'll perform an installation of the Landscape Scalable Charm bundle on a single machine and deploy everything into separate LexD containers. At the end, I'll expose the Haproxy LexD container and show you how to make Haproxy accessible via the host machine's IP address. In three steps, we can deploy a scalable landscape using Juju on a host machine. Uh, and beyond those three steps, there are two port forwarding rules in IP tables that will make this scalable landscape instance visible to machines that can reach that host machine's network interface. So with these two commands, we install Juju and bootstrap it, thus satisfying the Juju prerequisites. And with this, you're done. I'll open a terminal and run these commands now. And don't be afraid to follow along on your machines. I'm going to show you how to revert things back to the original state at the end. I mentioned earlier, I'm going to also include a valid SSL certificate 
So uh, it may deviate from the three steps by just a little bit, but it should be pretty straightforward to follow along. First, we need to connect to our uh, gene. This is the host name or the fully qualified domain name for the machine where I want to install landscape. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and flush all of the IP tables rules and make sure that that uh, persists across reboots. All right, fantastic. Next, we'll uh, install CertBot because we're going to get our SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt. And uh, to run CertBot, we're going to specify our domain name. So it's going to be landscapebeta.oracle.rajinpatel.com for the purposes of this demo. We're going to do a manual um, run. And our preferred challenge is going to be DNS. So this means that I'm going to uh, have to specify a TXT record in order to um, get the SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt. That looks right. Let's go ahead and run that. I want the email address for renewal and security notices. I accept the terms and conditions, and uh, I would like to be um, getting some emails. Here is my uh, TXT record. So I'll copy that to my clipboard, um, add that to my domain. All right, so the custom record has been saved. Um, I could verify that uh, you know this record beginning with 3PD has in fact taken effect. Um, I'll open up a new tab in my terminal and just do a quick check. Let's check the uh, text record for landscape beta. Interesting. That's not TXT record. Ah because I mistyped it. Uh, it is underscore acne challenge at landscape beta. And it does, in fact, uh, start with 3PD. So let's press enter to continue. All right, so the, successful, the certificate has been successfully issued. Um, We've got the full chain here. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. That's going to be useful for the next step. I'm going to base64 encode the uh, certificate. So sudo base64, uh, zero, is that in there? Uh, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I, when I when I launch landscape scalable, I'm going to get a proxy with a self-signed SSL certificate. I don't want that. I want to have my SSL certificate in there. So um, when deploying a proxy, you have the opportunity to include your certificate information as base64 encoded um, values uh, in a parameter. So let's get these base64 encoded values generated and stored as variables. And then when I run that um, uh, a proxy charm deployment command, um, I have these available for me. So that's all sorted out. Next, we have to get our submittens on Juju. sudo snap install Juju. Classic confinements. Straightforward. Will Juju bootstrap the local host? This does take a hot minute. It has to set up two models. And uh, one model is going to be for the controller, and the other model is going to be where you deploy your charms. So first, it is uh, setting up the controller instances. Notice that it's attempting to connect to an IP address on port 22, and that was uh, why I flushed all of my IP tables rules. Uh, if the IP tables rules were too overly restrictive, um, this was a the path of least resistance for opening things up. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, we, I could have gone through the documentation and found what ports specifically I needed to open up and, and just expose the rules very selectively. But uh, yeah, for the purposes of this demo, uh, I just went down the shortcut. Uh, it's almost done. It's running the machine configuration script. And then we can go ahead and uh, deploy uh, landscape scalable. Uh, 
All right. So next we will uh, Juju deploy landscape scalable. And remember to specify the edge channel so that you get the beta code base. Uh, before doing this, I should have mentioned, I am actually running on the ARM, uh, like the server is running uh, an ARM processor. So I'm going to have to set some model constraints. I want to ensure that uh, Juju knows that my architecture is uh, restricted to ARM64. Now I can deploy uh, landscape scalable uh, edge channel. So notice it's getting the hyproxy um, uh, charm. That's going to be something that we take away right away. So let's go ahead and uh, do, do remove application proxy. And we're going to do it by force. Let's make sure that uh, it is in fact gone. I will remove the unit uh, forcefully. Probably don't even have to do this. No, wait, it's usually gone before I even uh, finish typing it. <laughs> yep, it's gone. And let's see if we can remove the machine. Uh, that proxy is the first machine, so it's always going to be machine zero when you use the landscape scalable charm. It's one of the first things that gets removed. So uh, we're, it looks like we're in good state. When we look at Juju status, we've got three machines that are spinning up. But um, we need to deploy uh, the new Haproxy using our um, new certificates. So let's talk through uh, what some of these things are. We've got the default timeouts. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. And here we are setting the uh, full chain and the private key. So our SSL certificate information is being carried forward and we're deploying it to Focal. Once that uh, Haproxy charm has been deployed, then we can relate landscape server with Haproxy. All right, Juju eight landscape server and a proxy. Let's take a look at your status. Okay, so uh, our unit is now a proxy slash one. That will uh, be something that we will reference in the uh, uh, future. But let's jump back to our slides. Let's uh, talk about what would happen if you were going to be doing things manually. So if you don't want to deploy the landscape scalable charm bundle, your alternative step three would be to deploy the landscape charm and its dependency charms individually. The landscape server charm can be deployed to Jammy or Focal. And it's worth noting that by specifying the edge channel, we're getting the beta code base. Now, you don't want the beta code base for the dependencies. Um, so be mindful of that. Uh, each charm's configuration parameters are defined in the documentation in Charm Hub. And uh, these are the configurations that are necessary for landscape. And step five on this slide shows you how to launch a proxy with a self-signed SSL certificate. Um, I showed you earlier how to install a free certificate from Let's Encrypt. Uh, but if you were going the self-signed route, um, you know, this is, this is covering that. Um, and lastly, because you're not using the charm bundle, you need to uh, relate all the charms to each other. And you also need to expose her proxy. Exposing her proxy is related to making it accessible from the host network's interface. So Juju expose her proxy, then you're going to identify the uh, host machine's network interface. And then that host machine's network interface's IP address and the container IP address where her proxy is running. Once you know these three things, it's a question of running the IP tables port forwarding um, command to set the port forwarding rule for port 443 and port 80. Let's jump back to the terminal and see where we are with that. Okay, it looks like a proxy is ready. Um, it's just the uh, landscape server is uh, installing a few packages. Uh, we're waiting on some relations. Like we're close to done. While we're waiting, let's uh, go ahead and expose a proxy. So, Juju expose a proxy. And uh, 
we will run these uh, commands from that slide that expose the, uh, the interface. So now we know the interface is ENPOS3, uh, our interface IP is just so checking to ensure that everything is in order, uh, and then our container IP. It's hot of it to run, but it's effectively going to get uh, one the IP ending in dot one five one. So you want to uh, open up port 443. Uh, no point having you guys sit there and watch me type this big long one out. So excuse me for just copying it from clipboard. And then uh, you also want to do the same thing for port 80. So our two port forwarding rules are now present. Um, let's take a look at our port forwarding rules. Got a few. Um, I should probably clean that up. Uh, I'm going to take six of them out. <laughs> you can tell I've, I've been uh, experimenting with this several times. And uh, let's see. Great. Now we've got none. Set the rule for um, port 80. And, uh, and we'll rerun it for port 443. Let's take a look at our port forwarding rules. Great. So now we have um, port 80 and port 443 um, being forwarded to the appropriate location. I'm glad we checked that. Um, that would have been a bit of a fiasco later on in the demo. Um, take a look at the status of uh, Juju. It seems like everything is ready. All right. And then our host name was landscapebeta.morphle.com. Voila. It's just a question of uh, filling out the uh, sign up page. You've created your administrator account and now you're logged into Landscape. So I did promise that uh, if you were following along, that uh, you would be given instructions on how to roll everything back. Uh, so Juju can destroy the controller, the model, and reclaim disk space gracefully through the destroy controller command, or forcefully and instantly through the kill controller um, option. And uh, for line number two over there, um, I'm pulling out the line numbers for the port forwarding rules, which you saw me demonstrate earlier. I had a bunch of uh, incorrect port forwarding rules, which I needed to clean out and um, it, the magic is happening with that uh, dash D pre-routing one. So I was removing line one every single time. I removed line one six times and then I added the correct rules that I wanted. Um, it's, wor it's worth being careful when you're deleting by line number because when you delete a line, it changes the line numbers for all the rules below it. Everything gets shifted up by one, uh, but that was fun. Um, I hope your takeaway from this session is that Juju is versatile and simplifies your life. And um, if your Ubuntu footprint is growing and you're interested in participating in Landscape's evolution, the Landscape beta may be a compelling offering for you. I wish you happy trails as you deploy Landscape via Juju in your environments and look forward to interacting with you folks on the Landscape discourse forums. Back to you, David.